Hi friends, it's Diane from Boho Stamper. Welcome back if you're joining me again. If this is the first time that you're tuning in, welcome. I think we still have that little bit of buzzing sound there. I haven't been able to get rid of that. I apologize. So, happy Friday. Made it through another week. Yeah. Hope everyone had a wonderful Memorial Day. Got to um, enjoy some time with friends and family, if possible. Hi there. Glad to see you. I was just trying to get some glue off my table here. So we're going to do a very pretty, quick 15 minute card today. I made this card for a friend of mine um, that I gave her last night. And when I went to put it in the envelope, the envelope flap was a little bit tight sealing. So we're going to play around with the belly band on this and try to make it a little bit smaller today so that it'll fit into, let's move this up a little bit here so it doesn't fall off, um, so it will fit in the envelope easier. And let's see, are we at 10 o'clock? Another minute or so. Almost there. So I guess I can chat for a minute then about um, my upcoming workshops. Uh, in August here, oh, I took the papers downstairs because I'm going to try to, oh, I'm a little behind in all of my stamping news. I want to update my newsletter today and my webpage and get some of this information out there. But in August, we'll be having a card buffet with 12 cards available to make. And then in October, we're going to do a holiday stamp -a stack again. 12 cards. So I'm going to put some more information on my Boho Stamper webpage today about that. And you can go there and get some more details if you're interested. Right now, the August one is one evening. And the October one is, there are two evenings available. And I'm planning these around my husband's schedule too. So I'm going to double check with him what his Saturday plans are and maybe open it up to Saturday morning because I think that there may be some people who are working evenings and um, aren't able to attend the evening classes. So, so if you're watching, um, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. What kind of paper crafting you like to do? Do you like to make cards? Do you scrapbook? Um, do you journal? Speaking of journal, I have been making some journals. I told you guys I was working on them, and I finished my first one that I'm going to put on my Etsy shop. Which, I'll have to put that link below for my Etsy shop. I don't think that I've ever mentioned that I do put some of my cards and stuff out on my Etsy shop. I mean... I'm making like nine cards a week, and I don't usually send out nine cards a week, so I have to do something with those. So they are my Etsy store, which is also Boho Stamper. And let me um, show you quickly 
if I can find my right window. Here's my my journal that I finished that I am going to put on my shop. And this is, I am calling it a sunshine. Oh, look, it matches my Snoopy mug. Um, I'm calling this a sunshine journal. It is pretty thick. And so the person who gets this can, all, as a matter of fact, when I ship it, I'll probably take some of the tags out just to make it easier to send. But I think I counted um, 16 pages in each signature. I have two signatures in here. And a little tuck spot with a tag. A little flip down notebook. There's a lot of tuck spots in this. A lot of journaling cards. A lot of tags. If the user wants to get rid of them, they are welcome to do that. Because that's what's making this journal thicker. There are a lot of open spaces for writing as well. Uh, fold out to make notes in and journal in. Lots of little cards, more room for writing, tags. Uh, this little design, this little quilt design is from Gail Gustinelli. And a lot of what I learned about creating journals came from Gail. Uh, Crafty Cat USA, wonderful artistic young lady. I, I like watching her. And um, Roxy's Creations, Rachel at Roxy Creations. And Rachel actually inspired me to get my stitching back out and hand stitch some more, which I found that I truly have missed. So this is um, a little sunshine journal. That will be available on my Etsy shop. So I did do some machine stitching around some. Like I said, I did leave some open spaces for journaling. And I have to show you, this is like one of my favorite little pieces. <clears throat> I had some handmade paper, so I wanted to add a little piece under this. Um, this is parchment, torn parchment, that I have my little encouragement words on. So I ripped out this piece of handmade paper, and there's a little plant in there. I don't know if you can see that plant. Look at that. There's like an impression of a leaf, and then there's a little, little plant growing in there. Not growing, but I, mean, I don't know if they did that on purpose, but that was perfect. So that ended up being like one of my favorite little tucks in here. Just some more writing space and I added some lines, stamped some lines, added lots of little cards. Um, little bag here with a flower pot note card to write in. So I had a blast making this. Learned a lot. I think that I got so carried away making these tags and, and uh, journal cards and stuff that my next one I have to learn to tone it down just a little and not try to add so much and make it quite so thick. I think my next one I'm going to do a farm, a farmhouse journal. So, um, take a peek over there if you have a few minutes and there are cards there. I don't know, Etsy I may have to find a solution to Etsy. Last couple months I've owed Etsy more than I've made and I don't really think that's how it's supposed to work. And there's a couple little talk library cards for notes back here on the back panel. And then I just tied this shut with some yellow lace. I did not glue that because I thought maybe somebody may have something different that they want on there. I did um, add a little sunflower that I had. So, yeah, that's journal number one. And we'll see how it goes from here. I know I'm going to do one for myself. I've been saving little pieces to make uh, Alice in Wonderland. And I found a book cover, and that's what these are made with, our old book covers. Um, I've learned from the ladies different ways to do it, but I, I think the old book cover is probably my favorite 
so I found a pretty red one and I set that aside for my Alice Alice in Wonderland oh you need some dimensions don't you so here's the card that we're gonna do and this is just a belly band that comes off and then your message is on the inside and the original measurements I found to do this I've even they were this one it was huge and the band just was falling right off so I altered them a little bit and we're gonna I think I'm gonna adjust them a little bit again today while we make our card so let's see we need this one no that's me again you don't want that you want that all right there's your measurements so if you want to take a screenshot of that or um, jot them down or print them and and if you miss them you know you can always go back to the video and just get this screenshot again and print it off just remember um, to write yourself any notes on any adjustments that we make going through our card if we find those like you know tweaking this band a little bit tighter right all right boy I just am determined to be in there today I guess I don't know why I'm not at a hundred percent today you don't really want to keep an eye on this okay so I'm using today of course old designer series paper that we're working at getting getting gone and so this is from the botanical butterfly series and you know me I'm not necessarily a butterfly -y person but I did like some of the prints on this paper and need to use it up so that's what we're going to use today and I've chosen some foamy blue and I'm using a retired peekaboo peach you can also use a Grapefruit Grove, I think would match up with the orange in this print, or the new Pale Papaya, I know matches up with that orange. And Balmy Blue, of course, is still an available color. So there you go. My retirement um, greeting came from Onto Adventure. I meant to look this up because I think this might still be available. And I don't know about you, but right now it's retirements and graduations for me. And I just did about five graduation cards, and I have another one. I just got an invitation yesterday. And I wanted to share this path to greatness has some of, I think, the nicest sentiments on here to send to a graduate. And actually, <clears throat> I pulled them out because I also thought, oh, I'm getting a glare. Um, it would be great for a retirement card, too. Oh, I think I've taken all my graduation cards down the mail. But I used um, some of my alcohol ink paper. And then, what did I do? I made labels. I die cut labels with some of these messages that I wanted to send. Mayor Jern... Your journey has molded you for the greater good. I think that's great. Congratulations on all you've achieved. That's the one I thought would be good for either a retirement or a graduation. And only the best for you today. And you can also use it for a thank you. Nice graduation set, though. Probably one of the nicest ones that I have, I think. I think. My opinion only. Um, my... Label dies today came again from the Hippo and Friends dies. It just worked out that it fit my retirement stamp. So let's get started. I do apologize for my voice. It will come back again one of these days, I promise. So let me see. Let's do the balmy blue. I, I'm doing two different pieces of, two different patterns from the designer series paper because I didn't think you'd want to watch me do the exact same thing two times. And we have a card base. 
of eight and a half by five and a half. And now we're going to just do some scoring. Okay. In our card base, we're going to score in two and one eighth inches from each side. So the easiest way for me is two and an eighth, flip it around, and two and an eighth because I really don't feel like calculating. Okay. And you know what? I'm just going to do them all while I'm at it. How's that? I'm going to do three cards here. They're all the same design, but um, with a little bit different pattern paper. Two and an eighth. Two and an eighth. And sometimes I think repetition just helps us. I'm not going to do the bands all at once because I still want to double check what I came up with here make it fit a little better. Oh, those birds out there are just having a wonderful morning. Chirping away. Okay. Uh, let's see, we're doing blue. Blue, 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 blue. Get my bone folder. And, let's see, do I need to move up here a little bit? Kind of squish stuff. Fold my first side in. And then I'm going to make sure that my centers come together before I burnish my edges because I don't really want them overlapping. Now it opens up like a book. Perfect, right? Oops, until I bend it. And then we have a couple of pieces of our designer series paper that are cut at one and seven eighths by five and a quarter. Please be careful if you're using a directional pattern. And I, I didn't even screw this up. My butterflies are going up and down, so when I wanted to do the panel for my belly band, of course it looks like I didn't quite cut that down narrow enough, but we can do that. I wanted to change the direction of my paper so that my otherwise my butterflies would have been going sideways across my panel, and I didn't really want that, or across my band. So watch your directions on your pattern and make sure you are measuring. Actually, my other one is like that too. Did I get them all right? I did. Boy, I was on a roll. Actually, I was going along really well until I decided I didn't like, except I think I'm missing a piece here. Um, until I didn't like the size of that, that band. I am missing a piece. We'll have to cut one more. Okay, so let's adhere. I would, for the first one, open my card up. And then I'm just going to use some of my tape runners. And then center your design paper in the middle of the panel. Now we can close the card, and we'll be able to, oh, I got that one a little crooked anyways, I guess. We'll be able to add our second panel and line it up to the first panel, if you didn't get it too crooked anyway. Sis, don't scratch mommy's rug. way you can get your tops and your bottoms pretty much straight across. Okay. So let's trim this band down a little bit. Our band should be one and a half inches. One and a half. Oh, maybe did I make the blue one too narrow? Oh, one and a quarter for the DSP. So sorry, one and a quarter. I'll cut a little bit off of that. 
go. And I'm going to adhere this to the blue band before I score it so that I get them lined up evenly. That's better. Yeah, so you guys have graduations and stuff coming up. You know, things are starting to get lively again. Busy, busy. I'm almost going to miss being locked up here crafting. Now we can take our band and do our folds. So, <clears throat> I don't even know where I put the original measurements. But I did mine down to two and three eighths to make it a little bit tighter around my card. And then this morning I was practicing and I scored at two and a half. So I'm going to score this one at two and a half and see where we end up. I understand if you um, maybe had a lot of layers on your card, you would need this band a little bit looser, but we don't have that many layers. So let's try two and a half. See how it fits. Fold this in. And if it doesn't fit, then it's just paper. We'll make another one. Gives us enough room to overlap. And it's a little snug. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. All right, let's. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, liquid glue here because I want to make sure this stays closed. So I'm just going to use my Tombow multi liquid glue. And I just I buried my little dish that I was using. Let's just set this on here for a minute to dry while we get. stamped image so I'm just going to use a scrap of white is that going to be big enough sure I didn't come back up last night and um, stick all of my stamps onto acrylic blocks. I actually went and saw a couple of my friends last night. We have, um, I have a group of girls that I graduated with and we still try to get together, have dinner, catch up, and we haven't done that obviously for over a year. So last night we did. We went to one girl's house. She made a wonderful lasagna dinner and um, got to visit with the ladies for a little bit and boy they're just a cure for any ailment you have. It's so good to have friends to sit and visit and chat with. I guess I can keep that out. And, um, yeah, this girl's daughter just graduated from medical school. I told her she was just in time since we're all getting to that age where we're going to need help. And then my inside. make them all retirement cards but I know I did need a couple so let's that's stuck now yep, good I can put my inside 
of my card. Oh, don't do that. I hate it when I do that. I think I just get in a hurry and I lift too quick and I rip my paper. And my, my friends out there who are still waiting on their envelopes, I am, I, I am so sorry. I still do not have those gems, those jewels. They are still on back order. So I ordered a replace. I, I ordered something different for you. And I'm going to add those to your envelopes and send them out. And then when the in-color jewels finally do arrive, I'll just send them out to you in a separate envelope. I've had your little envelope sitting here for, <clears throat> what, a month now? I'm wanting to get that to you, and I'm just, I'm, I'm embarrassed to death that I can't get what I offered. So, so I'll make it up to you and just send you something different in there. And I have that extra... Designer Series paper and your little thank yous from May. Here we are into June and I don't even have my May work done. But we work with what we have, right? So this is the mini cut and emboss, baby boss. And I'm just cutting my greeting out here. Take one of my mommy blue scraps and using the hippo die again. I just got the next larger size, same shape, just moved it up one size, and then we'll put that through here because you know I might be more of a monochromatic person, but I love my layers. And the post office does too. <laughs> when I get done here, I have to. I did take a package yesterday down to um, the post office to send. Poor girl. I told her I'd send her package out yesterday. I did message her though. So I laid it on the counter. She says, Oh, honey, it's UPS. Uh -huh. I gotta go run to the UPS store. So now I gotta go over to Staples this morning and drop that box off. I never even looked at the label. Just printed it, slapped it on my box, and out the door I went. Okay, so here's our little card that opens up. And you wouldn't even have to make the belly band if you don't like. But I like. So, you just bend your card a little bit. Your belly band will slip right over the top. And then I'm going to adhere my greeting with a couple of dimensionals. Keeping them towards the middle of my die cut greeting because I don't want them to go over top of the band onto my card. So Monday, on my Hello Monday Facebook Live, I pulled out a set. I know, I think I was going to do Father's Day cards, right? <sighs> Whatever. If we must, we must. But we will center our greeting on our belly band. And there you go. Easy peasy, actually, right? So anyways, for Monday, I pulled out um, nothing better than. It has, like, coffee and cocktail little stamps on there. It's kind of cute. So I don't know now. I guess probably should do Father's Day, right? right. Let's, do, let's do the orange one because... Like I said, I have to cut another strip for the other blue one. So 
again, and I already have this one scored. This was eight and a half by five and a half, and I did score in two and one eighth inches from each edge of the paper. We'll fold this in, making sure that we meet in the middle. have some more of the butterfly paper and we'll open the first side up to get this hopefully I'll center this one a little better I guess it was centered before it just was crooked Now I can close that and add my second panel. Lining it up so that my top and bottoms are even with the other panel. I don't, I don't know what I want to put on the inside of this one yet. So let's do our band. <clears throat> our band was nine and three eighths inches long. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And this orange band is, let me see, one and a half. And then our designer paper is one and a quarter. Let's get this glued down the center and we'll score it. I think I like the um, two and a half inch score mark better than the two and three eighths. So I apologize that I didn't catch that before. I um, uploaded the PDF to today's screenshot. Oh, I got that a little off. It's a good thing we fold that, right? Two and a half then, yeah. And I'm going from the edge of my cardstock, not the designer paper. Because you can overlap that in the back and it won't be noticeable. Um, let me see. Oh, there is still a special going on if you want to host us a workshop. You can earn extra Stampin' Rewards through, I believe it's June 14th. If you missed out on the special of joining Stampin' Up! for the extra product, that's too bad. <laughs> that one's over. So, um, you can still always join my Stampin' Up! team. I'd love to have you. And still great opportunities. We'll be having the summer celebration coming up. Oh, I don't think that one's going to fit. And celebration, in case you're not familiar, is... For every, I think it's every $50 worth of product that you order, you can get um, free products. Nice free products. Not, not crappy, junky stuff. I mean, I'm talking stamp sets and, and designer series papers and... Another scrap of white and as I said I'm using peekaboo peach this is so old that my 
stamp my ink pads. I have two of them, and I had to pull both of them out. I didn't know which one would actually have ink in it. So let's do this one. Um, congratulations on all you have achieved. Oh, will that fit in my... Yes, it will. This is pretty, pretty sketchy. I wonder if I should just pull out my grapefruit. I think I still have some ink left in that one. Oh, this one's worse. Oh, that's better. I mean, I want you to be able to see my, my message. Nice. And then I'll have to think of what I want to put on the inside of this card. Oh, where's Baby Boss? Come on, little fella. Yeah, so do any of you guys out there make journals or anything? I'd love to um, hear what kind of journaling you make or what kind of journals you make. Um, do you use do you use book covers or do you make cloth covers for yours? Or, um, what do you do? How do you make yours? So many different ideas. Just so much fun. Oh, and I was talking about um, Rachel at Roxy's Creation. Years ago, well, not all that long ago, I had started to do some wool felting. I love felted wool. Of a cute little collection of wool pieces but anyways I felted my own and um, so this one piece that I did came out really pretty <clears throat> it's kind of an off-white a dirty white looking piece of wool with different colors throughout and I was thinking that's really pretty what am I going to do with that so over time I just had started um, Pulling out some of my different threads and doing some stitching on it. And it really started to look pretty. I, I, I don't know why. I mean, maybe maybe it got to be summertime and I just put it away because, you know, it was wool. And I forgot about it. So, watching her channel, she's doing... Uh, a challenge with um, another textile artist and um, she was doing some of her embroidering stitches and I was thinking you know I gotta get my stuff back out when we were young you know my grandma grandma loved to sew my sister and I have had dresses I think that matched a pair of curtains but that's just the way it was then. I, I still remember them white with little blue flowers, blue satin belt. But anyway, Grandma also taught us how to embroider. And then as I got into you know, preteen years, I started to do some, and I remember this set. And I, boy, I kicked myself. I wish I'd have kept it now. It was a cruel work which is sort of embroidery but you're using yarn instead of threads and um, they were little jiffy patterns and they were plants 
So I remember doing a um, grape ivy, a Boston fern, an asparagus fern, and I don't remember. I think there were four. Maybe there were three. I don't know. But there was a stitch on that we did for the asparagus fern to make it fluffy. So anyways, while I'm watching this, I'm thinking, there's a lot of embroidery stitches. I'm just not remembering. So I took one of my pieces then of my felted wool. There we go. There's, there's our um, orangish, pe orangish peach one. Also very pretty with the butterflies. And I'll just do one more, the same but different. Oh, I have to cut one more piece of that paper that I lost. Um, is that it? Did I maybe just put it away? What is it? Yeah, so... I'm trying to remember how to do this asparagus fern stitch that I did when I was probably, I don't know, maybe I was a little older. Maybe I was like 18 or something. I don't know. And I don't remember. So I'm pulling out some of my embroidery books and trying to find that. And I took one of my pieces and of that felted wool. And I'm trying to do some of my old stitches on it to try to remember what to do and it's come in handy you know when hubby and I are sitting down in the evening and we don't always turn TV on and I like to read but you know if he's talking about something I don't want to ignore him while I'm reading so hand stitching is a great thing because I can work on that while we chat And if I can keep getting some of this stuff cleaned up in here, I have, I had made a bunch of pennies, wool pennies. I was going to make a penny rug. And, um, well, not necessarily a rug, but a throw for on the bed or something. Just for fun, because I like doing that stuff. And, um, so the pennies are made. I just never have sewn them to my background which I also have. I don't know if it's because I'm kind of weary about how to do it, or, again, it was wool, so I may have just set it aside. But I'm trying to finish some of these little things up. love doing them all. You know, I like all that old stuff, and those... talented people who we now do it as a craft and a hobby when it was originally done as a necessity I'm like in the two and a half inch fold here much better so please mark your instructions there on the bottom part where it says to score your band at two and three eighths inch from each edge I would change that to two and a half. And I did have an envelope. Let's see. Let's make sure that will close better now. I'll bet it does. So I shove that right up there in your face, huh? Sorry about that. Oh, you know what? I should have done this way. My flap won't get stuck. Uh, much better much much better yeah okay two and a half inch Did I do that? Yep. and two and a half might be a little snugger getting it around the card but uh, you save a little bit of frustration getting it in your envelope
So where did I put my blue ink? I just had it in my hand there. How about... I want to make sure whatever I pick stays within the confines of these dies because these just go together really nice, the two sizes. Great way to use up your little white scraps. Of course, remember if you're using um, a pattern paper that has a vanilla background, you want to be using very vanilla for your greeting and your message inside instead of using white. I can get that across. Oh, I can make two out of this scrap. Waste not, want not. Wait. I think Sissy just said, uh huh. Huh. Did you say, uh huh? Oh, maybe it was a snore. Could have misinterpreted that. And this is why I like to stamp my greeting before I die cut. You can see I stamped that very crooked. But once I have it cut, it should be straight again with any luck. Oh, straight, straight. What I usually do is just cut off these cut ends so that storing my little pieces is much easier and more likely to grab out something like that to use than something that has a raggedy edge. Just my little hint. <clears throat> Will she make it? Let's see. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Oh, it's gonna work, it's gonna work. As long as it doesn't move. And I'm going to make sure it doesn't move. Piece of washi will do the trick. Yes, I try to get as much out of each piece of my paper as I can, but that's okay. And I have colors that last me longer, so I still have Peekaboo Peach. Now I have Peekaboo Peach because it was on clearance and I got a bunch. So guess what color we'll be using to make a Halloween card? Yeah, but it's a pretty color. Baby Bloss back away. He's probably done for the day. Because I think, like I said, I have some uh, newsletter work to get caught up on. And there, see? Repetitive, but just in case there were any questions. Well, this could be for anything. Wishing you everything wonderful. Oh, it's a little crooked. Um, that could be a birthday, retirement, graduation, 
whatever you put on the inside to make it a little more specific. our 15 minute card today. Hope you enjoyed this one. Right. Give that a slight bend band over the top. Lovely. So, here we are. What do you think? Let me know. You know give a comment out there and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to help me keep going on my videos here and I will um, try to remember to put that Etsy link below uh, if I do forget it it's just Boho Stamper same as YouTube and Facebook and everything I was going to say, I'm missing a stamp. That's why I like to put them away when I'm done here. So I don't end up not having it when I go to make my next card. And there you are. Hope you enjoyed. Um, have a great weekend. Tune back in Monday, if you're on Facebook, for Hello Monday. And I don't know. We either do um, make cave and do a Father's Day card or nothing's better than. But I also have this new die that I want to play with. It's a stitched greenery die. And this die is a full background. Let's get rid of that. Put it on a Those papers are so terribly sticky. That's why I put them on magnets. Um, this is a full background die that is going to emboss uh, stitching into the paper, not necessarily cut it. So, let me play with that. It'll be fun. Do I have a magnet out? No, I'll have to get some more out. So tune in Monday on Facebook if you're if you're around and have a minute. Be 10 o'clock on Boho Stamper's Facebook page, and uh, we'll make something fun then too. So have a great weekend. Go make a card and, and send it out and make somebody smile. Love ya. Bye.